Today's challenge comes from my Zoom group in Maine, and we've decided to work this week on nocturnes. We did one last week, and now we're trying again because it's something often very new and a little tricky to do. So, a friend who also lives in Maine on Popham Beach gets up every morning and sends us these beautiful videos of the sunrise, and I capture those every now and then. And I got a screenshot, and I did a little sketch from it. So that's what I wanted to start with. I am using a black Hannemühle soft sanded paper called Pastel Fix. Had to check that one. Going to make it about 11 by 14. I also have with me my pan pastels. I'm going to start with that and then move on to my stick pastels here, the tr colors that I've already chosen. These are for the pan pastels. I have my drying sticks my vine charcoal, and I have protected my hands with my favorite clear shield that you can find at shop.com. I ought to sell this stuff because this is amazing, whether you're washing your hands a lot or to protect it from other chemicals and pastels. All right, so I'm excited to get started. I have given myself a limited amount of time so I can keep the painting fresh and exciting, and here's hoping wanted to mention a couple other things. I have my new stand that has two ring lights on it that holds my camera. That's exciting, so I'm trying it out for the first time. And I'm going to remember at this point to take my reading glasses off. So even though I'm close to the work, I don't get too absorbed in the details at this point. I will use these just to finish it off at the end. Here's my new light setup with the gooseneck that moves it around, about 80 bucks on Amazon. Very nice. The paper I'll be using is the Hannemühle Pastel Fix. I'm using black. It has an interesting texture. My choice of pastels and my drawing tools on the side and the setup with the paper and my sketch. Behind me on my laptop, I have the original photograph and the sketch here side by side. As you can see, I have laid out the design with vine charcoal. I try to keep in mind the rule of thirds, which is based loosely on the Fibonacci sequence, but also just kind of pushing it a little bit. Here, I'm using the edge of the paper to get a nice horizontal and clean line on the horizon and blend it in. I find a paper works best for that because sometimes rulers are a little too thick and the pastel doesn't go on easily. Starting with my pan pastels, I am laying in some of that original background color. It ties the painting together as you use it around. I'm also, as you see, thinking in the foreground of that horizontal, not the horizontal, the diagonal wash that the water has created as it goes back to the sea across the sand pulling the sky into that. And each stroke I make is in the direction that I want for that particular part of the image. The water stays very horizontal. The sandy wet surface has those great diagonals and then kind of a balancing soft diagonal up in the sky. Tying in that nice magenta as it comes forward. I'm using it in the foreground, but also want to hint in other parts of the painting to pull it together. I'm drawing up, away from the island that's off in the distance. I realize I need to keep that line clean as it comes down to the water, and just a little hint in between of that black shining through and that helps delineate the water from the sky. A little more bold now with a really warm color. Again considering where is it going to reflect on that wet sandy surface and on the water. I'm keeping the whole painting very low key. 
This is a nocturne after all. And that will help convey that feeling of the edge of time between night and day. In this case, it happens to be a photo from dawn, but it could also be a dusk painting. It's left enough room and ambiguity for the viewer to decide what they see in it. And that's important, I believe, for the artist to leave enough so the viewer brings their own interpretation into the painting. Now I have picked up my sticks and I use a variety of soft pastels. I've collected things over the years. I take the paper off as soon as I get them because otherwise I get too hung up on, oh my goodness, this is an expensive pastel as opposed to something that's cheaper. And what I'm after is just the hardness and the color that I want. Of course, you want to start the under painting with your harder pastels and build up to the surface with the soft ones and lay those like butter across the surface. I still don't have my glasses on here because I'm trying to keep it loose and not get hung up on those details. A little later on I did put on my glasses and realized that the texture of the paper is slightly mechanical and I work to blend some of that in. It's a very good paper, not necessarily my favorite. It's wonderful for portraiture. It has a very smooth, soft, sanded texture. But oftentimes for many paintings, I like something that has a little more grit to it, a little more tooth, and will let me play a little bit more along. In our discussion last week, we had created nocturnes and mine had been very cool colors. And one of the participants commented, well, to make a good nocturne, it should be cool because the moonlight is always cool. So I did some research online and looked at some of the master paintings of nocturnes and there are some warm ones out there. So this is what I did. I kind of challenged myself to create a warm nocturne. By limiting the colors makes it more effective because as the light fades, the colors are not as intense. They start to fade. Here, all the color is coming from the light in that sky. The sand, the island, other aspects are just being grayed down and losing the intensity of the light that gives them the colors, their local color, whether it be green or brown or something. All along, I keep telling myself, simple, 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 keep it simple. Make each stroke count. Think. You have to be thinking all the time. We often, as we get painting, get caught up in the, the act, the motion of putting the color on the paper. And we have to make ourselves stop and think, what exactly am I trying to say with this little bit right here? Make the strokes count in the right direction. There's a little foam sitting on top of that wave the black underneath of the paper is very nicely, without any work on my part, creating a shadow under that wave. A few more highlights, and they may look pretty light, but this is actually a medium blue. It's not even dark. It's the comparison, the contrast in the juxtaposition with those other colors that make it seem lighter. I often relate painting to making food, like the spiciness of it and the flavors that all meld together, 
or as Whistler did, to music. I mean, he said, why should I not call my works symphonies, arrangements, harmonies, nocturnes? It's right. It's a way of creating just beauty, be it in food, music, dance, painting, just in our lives. Yeah, sometimes I have to get on the other side of these things so my hand is working in that direction. I keep trying to find the right angle for the videos. I know they're improving, but there's always room for more improvement. If you have any suggestions, I really appreciate it. Just comment below or send me an email. A little lighter red. Early on, I found a lot of trouble with red. I was using simply Rembrandt's, and this is decades ago, and the red was just too hard. It wouldn't sit on top of the paper. These reds are the Terry Ludwig. They are soft. They go across the top. Beautiful. You get that gorgeous, rich red that's pure and vibrant. The foreground is that backwash of the water going back and I'm trying to find the variety in the shapes. As you can see in the original photo, but I don't want to overdefine it. I want to keep it the ambiance, the feeling of it and not all the details. I haven't used red for a long time and I was having so much fun with this red. The red, purple, and blue just makes a nice analogous combination for a nocturne. I think that's a wise idea is to use analogous colors in a nocturne. They blend better together. But experiment, you never know. Now here again, I had created those diagonals, but as I start working down over it, I want verticals of the light reflecting on top of that dampness on the sand. A little bit of spray in the wave. Okay, I'm ready to step back at this point. I feel if I keep fiddling with it at this point, it's going to get muddy and not good. I need to make some final decisions. I'm going to give it a break, let it rest, let me get a fresh viewpoint when I come back. I will try to record the finishing details that I do. I did have my glasses on for a bit, took those off. And if I don't get to record it, I will show you the finished product and let you know what the Zoom group says tomorrow. Here's the finished painting. I'm going to set it aside for a couple weeks and decide if it needs anything more. In the Zoom group, the share screen wasn't working, but what they could see of it, I got a lot of wows. It's hard when you can't see the details close up. Anyway, go ahead, keep experimenting, have some fun, try something different. And the most important thing is to enjoy life, even the little moments that happen all the time. It's kind of hard during this time when we're all isolated, but they are there, those beautiful moments of life.